It doesn't matter how big you think your dream is. It doesn't matter how big you think your vision is. God says, it's nothing for me. God says, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think. We want to say thank you for joining us for It's Time to Be Healed. It is time to be healed. Sickness, it's time for that to stop. Disease, time for that to stop. It's time for us to be healed. It's time for us to grab a hold of what God has preordained for us to walk in. It's time for us to lay hold of what Jesus Christ shed his blood for. It is time for us to be healed. And so before I get started on my message, because I feel like preaching, but before I get started on my message, I want to give you our prayer line number 704-525-8638. Once again, 704-525-8638. We want to pray for you. We believe that there's nothing too difficult for God. So no matter what you're facing in your health, trust and believe that there's nothing too difficult for God. It's not really whether or not God has the ability. It's never God's ability. It's never God's power. It's always your willingness to believe, your faith in God, your belief in the word of God. Jesus told people over and over again throughout the scripture, believe ye that I'm able to do this. He asked the blind men that. Believe ye that I'm able to do this because he could do it. But it's their believing that tapped in. It was their faith in him that caused him to tap in. And we have to make sure that we are believing God. And sometimes when, it, when you're facing sickness and disease, you got to be patient. And that's our topic for today, patience. You got to be patient because many times people want instant healings. They want things to happen right away. And sometimes healing has to be gradual because faith is rising and faith is growing. And it takes time for faith to grow. So I didn't mean to get in all that because I'm getting to my message. But I do want to remind you once again of my prayer line number 704-525-8638. We want to pray for you. We want to believe God with you for miracles in your physical body, miracles in your health, because there's nothing too difficult for God. But as I was saying earlier, we have to exercise patience. Many times we want it right now. It's like the guy who prayed, God, give me patience and give it to me now. You know, he wanted it right now. And that's the kind of society we live in. We have fast food, man. You go to the restaurant, and when you sit down, if you have to wait more than five minutes, what do you do? Excuse me, can, can somebody please come to my table? And sometimes we don't recognize that they're short staff, or sometimes we don't recognize that they're busy, but we want it right now. When the baby is hungry, she, he or she wants to be fed right now. Why? Because they are hungry. You know, they don't have patience. They have to learn patience. And a part of maturity a part of growing in God is learning patience, learning that God is in control, learning that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, knowing that God's word is true, knowing that the trying of our faith, it worketh patience. Patience is so important. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, it talks about how Abraham, through faith and patience, inherited the promise. Faith and patience. <clears throat> yes, it took faith, but you got to keep in mind, that when God initially spoke to Abraham, he was 75 years old. But you know when Abraham received the promise, when he walked in the promise, when he saw the fulfillment of the promise, he was 100 years old. That was 25 years that he had to stand on what God said. 25 years of, of staying focused. Now, of course, we know he blew it. You know, when he had uh, Ishmael, he blew it that one time, but then he got back on track. And that's a good, that's another that's a word in itself. You can blow it, but then God will get you back on track. But the bottom line is, though, it was faith and patience. We have to learn to be patient. OK, now I have a scripture that I want to read out of the Living Bible. And then we'll get into some more scriptures after that. But in the Living Bible, I'm going to read Habakkuk chapter two, starting with verse one. It says, I will climb my watchtower now and wait to see what answer God will give to my complaint. And the Lord said to me, write my answer on a billboard, large and clear, so that anyone can read it at a glance and rush to tell others. But these things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. But notice what God was saying to the man. He was saying, the things that I'm going to show you, they're not going to happen tomorrow. The things that I'm going to show you, it may not happen three years from now. I remember the late Kenneth Hagin talking about how, how in his prayer time, God would show him 
phases of his ministry. And he said some of those phases or some of those things took place 10 years later. Some of those things took place 20 years later. Some of those things took place a year later. He said, but sometimes just because God shows you the future, just because God gives you the vision, it doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. It doesn't mean it's going to happen next week. See, the late Pastor Robin Gould, he used to always say when I was in my teens, the path to the prize is greater than the prize itself. The path to the prize is greater than the prize itself. Why is the path greater than the prize? Because of what I learned on the way to the prize. Because of what I went through on the way to the prize. Because of all the things that I had to learn. I had to learn how to be patient. I had to grow in my thinking. I had to grow in my faith. I had to grow in my trust. I had to grow in my dependency. The path to the prize was so much greater than the prize itself. And when it comes to believing God for our healing, when it comes to believing God for prosperity, when it comes to believing God for whatever it is that he has promised us, we must understand that patience must have its perfect work. I like what uh, I believe was Brother Copeland said. He said, faith, he said, patience rather, patience keeps the door open while faith does its work. Patience keeps the door open while faith does its work. See, God wants to do great things in our lives. But notice, remember, going back to the scripture, he said, slowly, steadily, these things are going to happen. Be patient. Patience. See, many times we want instant healings. Many times we want instant manifestation. Now, don't get me wrong. When you're in pain, uh, instant manifestation will be great. You understand? So I get that. But we're talking about eliminating the root cause of the disease. What's causing you to be in pain? What's causing the sickness in your body? Many times our faith level is not equal to the challenge. And so therefore, we might have to take medicine. Therefore, we might have to take something to deal with the symptoms. But while we're taking that medicine and while we're dealing with the symptoms, we're standing on the word of God because we know it's just a matter of time before healing will take place. You know, in the past, I've always used Fred Price as an example. I was reading after him a few days ago. Actually, I was listening to a message. and He was talking about that tumor that he had or that growth that he had under his arm or, or near his chest. And he said when, when it came back, because the first time he had it, they had it removed, but then it moved and, and, and um, it grew in another area on his chest, in his chest area. And so he said that it grew faster than the one that he had removed earlier. He said it was growing faster and faster, and he was in more pain and more pain. But he said every day when he took a shower, he said, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. He said, I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. And he said it was close to, I think it was nine months of confessing the word of God. It was close to nine months of speaking the word of God until one day when he went to go wash, it was gone. But it took close to nine months because his faith had to grow. His faith had to be equal to the challenge. His faith had to get to the point where it could wipe out the tumor. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you'll get weary and well-doing. And you say, this stuff don't work. This stuff is taking too long. And now you're losing because you're questioning God's word. And we're never to question God's word. God's word is always true. God is not a man that he should lie. You know, the Bible tells in Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it says, cast your bread on the water and it shall return after many days. It ain't going to return tomorrow. You put that seed in the ground. You're not going to have an apple tree tomorrow. You're not going to have oranges tomorrow. Right. You got to be patient as long as. As the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest. Once again, seed, time, and harvest. Things don't happen overnight. You know, if you're trying to lose weight, then you know what I'm talking about. You, you, you waving a handkerchief at me because you're like, man, I thought the way it's easy for weight to come on. You, you look at yourself and say, man, I, man, how did this get so tight? Or man, I, what's going on? Right? And he said, you know, I'm going to lose five pounds. And then you're eating good, and you're running, and you're exercising, and then you've only lost two pounds. And he said, man, all this work I'm doing? And you have to realize that losing weight is a process. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of eating. It's a lifestyle of exercising. It's a lifestyle. See, in order for there to be a change in our lives, there has to be a lifestyle change. And many times, people just want instant change. People want, give it to me in a week. Give it to me in a month. No, you must be willing to have it done all to stand, you stand. And don't forget about our prayer line number, 704-525-8638. We want to pray for you on this morning. Now, 
In John chapter 4, verse 40, we'll start with verse 46. It says, so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal official whose son was lying ill in Capernaum. Having heard that Jesus had come back from Judea in Galilee, he went away to meet him and began to beg him to come down to cure his son, for he was lying at the point of death. Jesus, come, lay your hands on my son. Lay your hands on my son, Jesus. Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and miracles happen, you people never will believe, trust, have faith at all. The king's officer pleaded with him, sir, do come down at once before my child is dead. And Jesus answered, go in peace, your son will live. And the man put his trust in what Jesus said, and he went home. Now, if the man had kept talking to Jesus, come on, Jesus, I know what you said, but I would love for you to come with me. Jesus, I would love for you to go home with me, and I want to see you lay your hands on my son. I want to hear you pray for my son. I want to see the action. But Jesus was saying, no, you have to trust in my word. And that's so important for us to understand is that we must trust in God's word. I don't have to see something. I don't have to hear something. I don't have to feel something. I don't have to trust my senses because my senses were not created to believe spiritual things. My senses were created for me to contact things in this natural realm. I cannot touch an angel with my physical hand. I don't touch angels. You can't touch a demon with your physical body, right? There's a spirit realm and there's a natural realm. And sometimes we allow what's going on in the natural realm to affect our believing. But we don't understand that there are things happening in the spirit realm that we can't see. And Jesus said, I just gave you the word. I'm telling you, go home. I'm telling you, your son is okay. Now, he had a decision to make. Was he going to believe Jesus or was he going to believe what he saw? Or was he going to keep trying to convince Jesus? Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. You know, that's how many of us are. Come on, Jesus. God, please, let me just see you do something. You know, sometimes in the past, if there's a healing line, and I'm not trying to be petty, but this is the truth. Sometimes when there's a healing line, you know, it might be five ministers up there, and, and, and the person that's being healed, they'll say, boy, I sure do hope brother so-and-so lay his hands on me. Or I sure hope sister so-and-so lay their hands on me, but I don't know about brother so-and-so, and I don't know about brother so-and-so. See, their faith is in the preacher. See, their faith is not in God. The preacher is just the, uh, what's the word? The preacher is just the instrument. You know, he's just the instrument that God is using to, for you to have your healing. He's just a delivery boy. She's just a delivery girl. She's just delivering the power. She's just a conduit for the power of God. But many times people are looking at the person when our faith should be in God. But anyway, let's get through with the story. The Bible says, verse 51, But even as he was on the road going down, his servants met him and reported, saying, Your son lives. So he asked them, At what time had he begun to get better? They said, Yesterday. He started getting better yesterday. See, it was a gradual healing. It wasn't an overnight healing. He didn't say he laid his hands on him and boom, he got up and he was fine. He started to amend yesterday. He started to get better yesterday. Now we understand that there are instant healings. There are instant miracles. There are healings that take place where boom, just like that, a person can see. Or just like that, a person's ears opened up. Or just like that, somebody who was lame, somebody who was paralyzed, they can get up and they can walk. Right. So we understand that there are instant miracles, but we must also understand that when it comes to healing, many times healing is gradual. You know, the late Kenneth Hagin, he talked about how when they had healing school, many times they would lay their hands on a person. And after they laid that, their hands on the person, many times the person wouldn't be healed until a week later. Many times that person wouldn't be healed till two weeks later. He said and, and he would tell the person. Now, we're laying our hands on you, and after we lay our hands on you, when you're driving home, you say to yourself, the anointing is working. The anointing is working. He said, you may not feel it, you may not see it, but I'm telling you, the anointing is working. See, we walk by faith and not by sight. And he was telling these people, don't be moved by what you feel. I laid my hands on you. Many times in a prayer line, over the years, many times in a prayer line, if a minister lays hands on, on a person, if that person don't fall, they think they ain't get it. 
they lay hands on them, if they don't feel a jerk or if they don't feel something go through their body, they don't think they got it. See, they're sense ruled people. When you're believing God, you can't go by your senses. You can't go by a feeling. Oh, I felt something. Oh, I'm feeling better. It doesn't matter what you feel. What matters is what does the word of God say? And that man's servant, his, his son, rather, the servant's son began to amend after Jesus spoke the word and the man believed it. See, we must make sure that we're believing the word of God independent of our circumstances. Now I want to look at another scripture. Look at Luke chapter 8. Did you know the Faith Unlimited broadcast airs every Sunday at 6.30 a.m. on WMYT My 12, channel 55? For more information, visit MatthewChapmanMinistries.org and subscribe to Matthew Chapman Ministries on YouTube and all social media outlets for more faith-building content. We're talking about patience. We got to let patience have its perfect work. Now, in Luke chapter 8, and we're going to start with verse uh, 15. This is the parable of the sower. It talks about all the different kind of ground, the good ground, the thorny ground, the stony ground. But in verse 15, Luke chapter 8, verse 15 in the Amplified, it says, But as for the seed in the good soil, these are the people who, hearing the word, hold fast in a just, noble virtuous and worthy heart and steadily bring forth fruit with patience they take a hold of the word first they hear the word by jesus stripes you're here oh glory god wants you to prosper oh glory so they hear they get a hold of the word the word is true then the bible says they got to hold fast to it see when you when you hear the word of god if, if you study this parable out jesus talks about how when the word is sown on certain ground satan comes immediately to steal the word. You know, sometimes you could go to church, you could hear a good word. I mean, you are motivated, you are inspired, you are just like, you're like, oh, glory to God. And then next thing you know, you have an argument with your children or an argument with your significant other or the car break down or something happens. And you say, doggone it. I just, had, I just heard the word and now look at this. Man, I tell you, this stuff don't work. Then, 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 now the devil got you. See, but when you get a hold of the word and you hold firm to it, you are steadfast in it. You are persevering into looking into the perfect law of liberty. You just keep your eyes on the word. You're not worried about the distractions. You're not worried about the hardships. You're not worried about the obstacles. You're looking at the word. I keep my eyes on Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. I keep my eyes on Matthew 8, 17. I keep my eyes on 1 Peter 2, 24. I keep my eyes on the word that talks about healing. I keep my, my eyes on Psalm 103 and, and Proverbs chapter 4. Verses 20 through 22. See, the word of God is health and healing to all our flesh, but I got to hold on to it. See, back in the day, my children, if they had an ear infection or if they had some type of infection, they had to take, uh, uh, what do you call it, antibiotics. And they had the little pink bubblegum tasting antibiotics. And they tell you, you got to take it for 10 days. And they say, if you take it for two days, you might not see a change e initially, but you got to take it for the whole 10 days. And after you take it for 10 days, then you'll see the change. Or after about seven days, it'll get it out your system, but then go ahead and take the rest of the medicine. Or they say, after 10 days, don't take it anymore. But they tell you, you may not see a change the first two days. You may not see it the first three days. But you keep taking the antibiotics to deal with the infection. And it's the same thing with the Word of God. You don't just say after three days, oh, man, this stuff don't work. After five days, man, this stuff don't work. After seven days, man, this stuff don't work. I remember years ago when I used to teach in, uh, in private school, I used to teach at Victory, and I had this kid, I was talking about tithing, and I was talking about giving in, in, in Bible class, and I had one of my students come up to me, he said, hey, Mr. Chapman, you know, uh, this tithing stuff, man, you know, I gave last week, man, when this stuff going to work? I said, brother, you got to give it some time. He was expecting a harvest after a week. You know, seed, time, and harvest. I said, brother, it takes time. Seed, I said, we put a seed in the ground. It don't grow up overnight. It goes in the ground. The Bible says you got to go to bed. You go to bed and you get up. You go to bed and you get up. And the seed is growing. And you don't know how, but it's growing. So I had to, I had to let my man know, hey, look, man, be patient. I know you gave your tithes last week, but you got to give it time to work. Just like 
with the medicine, antibiotics, you got to give it time to work. You got to take it. Any medicine that the doctor may prescribe you, they may tell you, you know, you might have taken it for a month before you see something. You might have taken it for a few weeks, and then you'll see something. And you know what you do? You don't argue with the doctor. You don't say, hey, look, give me something that's going to work in three days. You don't tell the doctor, give me something that's going to work in five days. Right? Everything in this world system, generally speaking, it takes time. It takes time to build great health. It takes time to build wealth. You know what they'll tell you? If you go to the bank and, give me a second. You go to the bank and you make an investment, you know what they'll tell you? Or you know what they'll give you, um, they'll give you different options. They say, hey, well, you could do a, a three month CD. You could do a six month CD. You could do a, a 12 month CD. They might offer you a 36 month CD. And many times they'll tell you, that the longer that you're willing to keep the money in the CD or keep the money in the bank, the more interest it'll draw, the more money you'll draw. But you never go to the bank and they'll say, hey, man, we got a, a, a seven-day CD. We got a two-week CD. No, they'll tell you, you got to give it some time. Everything that's worth having, it takes time. That's why, once again, the path to the prize is greater than the prize itself. Let's look at... Uh, Let's look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22, let's start with uh, da, 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 da. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 20. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified. The Bible says, Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them unto those who are left and hide themselves from you are destroyed. You shall not dread them, for the Lord your God is among you, a mighty and terrible God. And the Lord your God will clear out those nations before you. But notice how God's going to do it. He says, I'm going to clear those nations out little by little. You may not consume them quickly, lest the beasts of the field increase among you. See, God says, you're going to win. God says, I'm going to take out your enemies. God says, I'm going to deal with your enemies, but it's not going to be a quick victory. We're not going to just wipe everybody out. We're going to do it little by little. You're going to have to be patient because you have to understand that if we just wipe all your enemies out, the beasts of the field will consume you. See, we have to trust God's wisdom. You know, many times when I used to teach in high school, we would have young people that say, when I get out of college, I want to make $100,000 a year. I want to make $80,000 a year. And I, and I have to try to bring them down to reality. And I say, look, that's, that's great that you have that ambition. I said, but you have to understand, you got to earn your stripes. You, you, you got to earn your keep. You don't show up to a job and you have no experience. Nobody knows who you are. And then you expect to make $100,000. I said, no, you got to learn. You got to get the knowledge. You got to get the skill. You got to get some expertise. You got to get some notches on your belt. You got you to earn that money. You, nobody just gives you anything. You have to earn it. And how do you earn it? You earn it over time. You earn it as you get the victories. You earn it as you start to, to prosper in the thing that you're working in. Oh, she's trying to give me some prayer requests. I got you. Thank you so much. But we got to understand that the path to the prize is greater than the prize itself. You know what many people want? The many, many people want to hit the lottery. You know, people spend hundreds of dollars. Man, I was at Publix a couple nights ago, and I saw this dude. He had a wad of cash sticking it in the lottery. In the, in not the lottery, but in the, um, he was playing the numbers, you know, trying to win, trying to win some. And I'm like, man, you, all that money, you got to invest that in the kingdom of God, all that money. Or you put that in the CD. But nah, man, he was sticking that money in that machine, buddy. He trying to win. He trying to get $100,000. He trying to get a million dollars. He trying to get $250,000. Why? Because he wants, to, he wants to get it quick. He doesn't want to stay disciplined in his finances. And brother, I don't know who you were, so if you're watching, please forgive me. I'm not trying to think. But, but this guy, man, he is trying to get that money. And many people are like that. They want to play the lottery. They want to play the numbers. So I can get rich overnight. But see, steady over time. God wants to bless you over time. The path to the prize. The path to prosperity. Saving your money, sowing your seed, seeing God multiply the seed, seeing God go before you make crooked places straight, watching God give you favor, watching God increase you over time. See, when you do it that way, the money won't destroy you. Many times people who win the lottery who win the lottery and get rich overnight, they lose it after two, three years. 
They lose it after five years. So we must understand the path to the prize. We must understand patience. We cannot be people who want a quick fix. We cannot be people who want it all right now. And I cannot be a person who just keep on talking and talking and talking without praying over these prayer requests. All right. So somebody has a sister who cannot walk. There's nothing too difficult for God. Somebody's dealing with chest pains and stress, arthritis in the back, itching, eyes and kidneys. There's nothing too difficult for God. Back pain, insomnia. We, the Bible says that God gives his beloved sleep. And so we're going to believe, God, that you sleep on, on this evening and the rest of every evening, every night. Okay, because that's, that's a promise in the word of God. And then somebody's dealing with kidney cancer, pain in the arm, hands, back, pain, dizziness. And then somebody, believe God, for favor on their job, housing, granddaughter to be saved. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for these prayer requests. Father, we command cancers to come out of the body. We command the insomnia to cease in Jesus' name. We speak peace to your mind in the name of Jesus. Father, we just pray for all these conditions. That person who cannot walk, we call them free. We call them healed in the name of Jesus. We command the legs, the back, every organ, every tissue, every part of their bodies to function perfectly in the name of Jesus. Father, we just pray for all of these situations represented here. We thank you, Lord, for healing. We thank you, Lord God, for manifesting yourself in a greater way and showing yourself strong. We command healing to take place in these bodies. We command negative situations to be turned around. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. There's nothing too difficult for God. So if I prayed for you, if you sent something in and I prayed for you, say, Minister Chapman prayed and I believe it. It's going to happen. I believe I'm healed. I believe my daughter or whoever it was is going to walk. And whoever that loved one is that's not saved, God is sending labors across their path and they're going to get saved in the name of Jesus. We walk by faith and not by sight. Thank you so much for joining me on today. It's always a pleasure to minister the word of God to you. And remember this, you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. Did you know the Faith Unlimited broadcast airs every Sunday at 6.30 a.m. on WMYT My 12, Channel 55? For more information, visit MatthewChapmanMinistries.org and subscribe to Matthew Chapman Ministries on YouTube and all social media outlets for more faith-building content. Pray that you were moved by this message from Minister Matthew Chapman. If you were blessed by this word of God and want to be a blessing towards the ministry, you can visit MatthewChapmanMinistries.org or write us at P.O. Box 242-422, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28224. And make sure that you tune in next time for Faith Unlimited.